Hi, I'm Xu Kai Zheng. Today I'm going to talk about Python under a microscope, scanning tiny microscopy, bulk image processing, feature recognition, and extraction of statistics. First, I want to say thank you to Professor Bai and his research group at Center for Condensed Matter Sciences in National Taiwan University. I also want to say thank you to my research collaborator, David Michaelos, in National Tsinghua University. Okay, so uh, image and pattern recognition is a hot topic and has enabled huge progress uh, in artificial intelligence, machine learning, facial recognition, and, and so on. Here I'm going to demonstrate how to use image and pattern recognition for scientific data acquisition and analysis. So first, I will introduce two commonly used uh, techniques in surface science, scanning tiny microscope and low energy electron diffraction. Uh, then I will talk about uh, how to pre-process and process STM data, uh, and then apply feature recognition and extraction of statistics. And then I will talk about uh, lead image processing and apply feature recognition again. I will extract information and convert those information into a similar plot. At the end, I'm going to compare the results from both techniques. So what is scanning tiny microscope? As its name implies, is a kind of microscope which is based on a phenomenon called uh, quantum tunneling. Scanning tiny microscope can be regarded as the pioneer of the third generation microscope, succeeding optical microscope and electron microscope. Um, it has opened up a whole new field called scanning probe microscope. microscope. The invention of STM uh, gives us the access to look into the nano world. Here are some pictures of our commercial low temperature STM. It's an ultra high vacuum system and equipped with some vibration isolation setups. So in an STM, a sharp metallic tip is brought close to the sample, uh, typically within the range of a nanometer. And the ele electrons turn through the vacuum barrier, and the turning current depends on the tip sample distance uh, exponentially. So uh, by precisely controlling the tip sample distance, and the turning current, uh, we can get a high spatial resolution image after the tip is raster scanned over the sample. So we can study the surface structure or any kinds of defects on the surface. STM can also fabricate uh, specified structures uh, by manipulating the atoms around precisely. An Australian group uh, built the world's first quantum computer IC by uh, precisely uh, positioning the atoms. Okay, let's talk about the next uh, technique, low energy electron diffraction. Here's our lead system. It's also an ultra high vacuum system and the camera is outside in air and focuses on the phosphorus screen. On the top right corner is a cartoon picture of the setup. Um, the electrons coming out from the electron gun uh, have wavelengths comparable to atomic spacing and can be elastically scat scattered by the, top, uh, by the atoms in the top few layers of the sample. And such uh, little penetration can be used to determine um, the symmetry and positions of atoms in the unit cell. So basically, we can view the lead image as the Fourier transform of the atomic resolution image from STM. Okay, let's move, move on to the next section, pre-processing STM data. The software we use for our STM system uh, saves all data in SM4 file format. And RHK SM4 here is a Python package that allows us to load and read our STM data and further allows us to process uh, our data as NumPy array. NumPy is a scientific computing package in Python, widely used for array or matrix uh, manipulations and transformations. Here is uh, the raw data shown by Matplotlib, and as you can see, uh, there are some clear stripes from top to bottom. 
This is because um, scanning often accompanies thermal drifts and atoms getting picked up by at the tip apex. So a simple and common way to address this issue is to apply mean or median uh, subtraction. Here I use NumPy mean and NumPy medium to offset those stripes. Uh, NumPy mean and NumPy medium compute uh, the average and median of the given data along the specified axis. So after processing, um, as you can see, uh, those stripes are uh, clearly removed. And STM is uh, easily susceptible and very sensitive to upcoming noise. So on the data processing point of view, uh, we can use Gaussian filter to get rid of those high spatial uh, frequency data, or said uh, to get rid of those uh, so-called hot pixels. Um, both SciPy and SciKit uh, have libraries available uh, for Gaussian filter functions. So with Gaussian filter, we actually uh, smooth out the data, or say blur uh, the image. OpenCV also has uh, methods for averaging and blurring. The only thing that we have to do is to define something called kernel, uh, which is a number of rows and columns. We define a kernel uh, so the function can uh, uh, compute the pixel intensities surrounding the center pixel and then assign a new value to the center, uh, the center pixel. The final STM artifact I'm going to talk about is the flatness issue. First, when we mount a sample on a sample plate, it's not possible to manually mount a sample uh, flat uh, on the nanoscale. And secondly, uh, when scanning large distance uh, using uh, tube scanners, uh, the scan plan often follows a curved surface. So it is often necessary to um, flatten the data uh, with a second order or even high order polynomial feeding. And here NumPy polynomial uh, gives us such function. We can evaluate uh, a 2D polynomial at our data points. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Uh, Feature recognition and extraction of statistics. Let's say we have a bunch of STM data, um, which is often the real case, and which is why we need a systematic method to do data analysis. Okay, we have a bunch of STM uh, data, and within each of them, uh, there are some flakes or say islands in it. Although there could be uh, several uh, distinct patterns, uh, for our purpose here, I'll just focus on two major types. Um, triangular islands pointing up and down, and triangular islands pointing left and right. For those triangular islands pointing up and pointing down, each of them has one horizontal edge. And the angles of uh, their edges uh, with respect to the horizontal axis are 0 degree, 60 degree, 120, 180, uh, 240, and 300. So we can categorize these uh, two types of angle triangles into zero degree domain. Uh, by the same token, um, for uh, triangles pointing left and right, um, each of them has one vertical edge. And the angles of their edges are 30 degrees off uh, compared to zero degree domain angles. So we can categorize these two types of triangles into 30 degree domain. For simplicity, I'll just uh, limit our focus uh, to one single STM image uh, at the bottom right. So how do we start uh, the st statistics of two major types of domains uh, within one single STM image? As I have pointed out, we can use edges. So one way to find those edges uh, is using something called Sobel operator. Its mathematical representation is shown here. Uh, it's essentially a mixture of averaging and discrete uh, differentiation uh, by convolving the SOAP operator with uh, the source image. Let's say our STM image here. We are basically 
computing um, the gradient components of the image along uh, the x and y directions. So uh, here I use NumPy to do such computation for me, and I also use uh, uh, the convolution function from SciPy. We can also combine uh, both gradient components into an overall gradient mag magnitude by using NumPy square root function. And here I also use uh, NumPy Octangent tool, uh, which takes into gradient components um, uh, to convert the gradient directions into angles. And as you can see uh, on the right, um, those edges are depicted out. And OpenCV also has methods for grabbing those edges, OpenCV Laplacian, OpenCV Sobo, and OpenCV Kenny. Kenny is an advanced and complex algorithm which involves Sobo in one of the stages. So, uh, I will compare the results of Sobo from NumPy and from uh, OpenCV later. And here you can see um, those edges are uh, depicted out using uh, any of the method. So another way to start the statistics is to detect the, uh, the whole triangles directly. Here I use OpenCV functions to, uh, to do that. And this generally requires some uh, pre-processing. OpenCV threshold uh, applies thresholding to the image. And CBT color uh, converts the image to grayscale and OpenCV erode diminishes the edges uh, and allows us to address the issue when, uh, when the triangular islands, uh, when the nearby triangular islands can merely merge together, as the arrow points out. And OpenCV find contours uh, looks at the edges and returns the contour, which is a list of all coordinates of all the contours found in the image. And OpenCV approximately DP approximate the polygon and curves with a specified uh, precision. And OpenCV draw contours, uh, simply uh, draws the contours on the image. So uh, what can, uh, uh, what can um, the shape identification method do for us that uh, the Sobo operator cannot? So the best thing to use shape identification method is that we can easily collect those information that we want, such as triangular islands counting, triangular area, triangular orientation. So uh, the hard part here is uh, to, uh, to search for those optimal uh, parameters that we can uh, detect all, all the uh, triangles that we want. Um, we have to tune the parameters here and there, um, sort of the try and error thing. So after we have a Sobo operator and shape identification method uh, to start with, we want to uh, reflect the extracted information in an intensity versus angle plot. So here I use NumPy histogram to do that thing. And I divided uh, intensities into uh, angles from 0 degree to uh, 360 degrees. You can also use OpenCV calc hist to do the same thing. And here I also use uh, NumPy degrees to convert uh, the angles from radians to degrees. And I use NumPy mod to confine the angles to be within the range of 0 degree to 360 degrees. And here are the results. As for the uh, shape identification method, I also gave a weighting factor, which is based on the triangular area bounded. And since in reality, intensity also relies on the triangular area, uh, it relies on the island size. Uh, larger, larger islands uh, contribute more intensities uh, than those smaller islands. So here I use uh, OpenCV contour area to return this weighting factor for me. And here are all the results. And as you can see, uh, by either using SOPA operator or shape identification method, um, the peak uh, lo locations um, are nearby 0 degree, 63, 
120, 180, 240, and 300. And this tells us that um, the dominant uh, patterns uh, on the image uh, are from a zero degree domain. Okay, let's move on to the next section, lead image processing. Let's say again, we have a bunch of lead images. And within each of them, there are, uh, there are six outer spots, uh, which correspond to substrate signals. And there are also uh, uh, 12 arc-like patterns uh, with, uh, on, a in, on the inner ring. And we can also categorize uh, these 12 arcs uh, into two domains. Those six arcs, uh, uh, which align with uh, those six outer spots, or say, having the same angular positions, they belong to zero degree domain. And for those, for all the others, they belong to 30 degree domain. Here I applied a thresholding to the leftmost uh, image to get the image next to it. And for simplicity, again, I will just focus on one single lead image at the bottom right. So our goal here is to um, get the similar intensity versus angle plot. So the first step uh, is to find the positions of those signals, both spot signals and arc signals. So the way to find uh, the signals is um, using something called blob detection. And both OpenCV and Scikit image, each of them has uh, algorithm available. So uh, one, one difficult task is to reduce the number of detections while not losing those uh, those blob blobs that you do want. So this uh, often requires some uh, pre-processing such as Gaussian filter, thresholding, uh, and masking. So after, uh, after blob detection, we can further uh, locate those signals better with the center of mass function from SciPy. So here I use NumPy MA uh, function to let in only those uh, pixels block detections, uh, block de detection returns. And I gave those pixels a uh, narrow windows. Uh, I gave those pixels uh, some narrow windows. And, I and, and then I passed this maxed array to the center of mass function. So after we have uh, the positions of the signals, we want to find the center of the signals. We want to find the center of those spots, and we also want to find the center of those arcs. Ideally, that should give us the same center. Um, this step is to um, enable us to do map coordination later. So here I use uh, minimize uh, from SciPy optimize. We provide a function of uh, some arguments uh, which uh, returns a value uh, for of for, for, we, for which we find the minimum. We can also add some boundaries or limits on those arguments. So uh, after we find the center and the range of the circular region uh, where uh, arc signals reside in, we can do map coordinates. Uh, we built an array of points in original pixel in original image pixels, and then we pass this array to map coordinates function, which interpolates the image at those points and returns a new array. So essentially, we are uh, remapping the circular region to a uh, um, Cartesian R theta coordinate. And you can envision uh, this procedure as uh, you you uh, you give a cut and uh, you give a cut uh, of uh, those circular region or circular band at a zero degree and you uh, unzip it and flatten it, you stretch it. So after that, uh, we can sum up uh, pixel values along y-axis and get the intensity versus angle plot that we want. So now if we uh, zoom in and take a closer look at those six outer spots, 
we can notice that um, the, signal, the signals are uh, actually Gaussians along both directions. And since, uh, uh, since Gaussians are uh, what real physical signals should be like, we will fit Gaussians for those uh, diffraction patterns for both spots and arc signals. It, as you can see, um, the, uh, before fitting, those uh, Gaussians are a bit uh, uh, deviated. So here I use NumPy to define a 2D Gaussian function uh, for me. And I define the uh, 2D Gaussian uh, both symmetric and non-symmetric along x and y directions. And you can visualize them after you define them. And after that, I use a curve fit uh, from SciPy Optimize uh, to do the fitting for both uh, spot signals and also arc signals. So I gave a, 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 15, a plus minus 15, 15 degree uh, range for, uh, at those characteristic angles. Uh, we cannot go more than 15 degree. Um, Otherwise, the signals from two different domains will overlap. So after Gaussian fitting, uh, we can uh, get uh, we can get a similar intensity versus angle plot. And as you can see, uh, uh, the peaks uh, uh, still locate at those uh, characteristic angles, uh, but the peaks uh, get uh, rounded. Finally, we will compare the results from both techniques. So in both uh, uh, lead image and STN image, uh, there are two different uh, types of domains, uh, zero degree domain and 30 degree domain. In STN image, uh, zero degree domain has uh, triangle, triangle islands, triangular islands pointing up and down. And 30 degree do domain has uh, triangular islands pointing left and right. And in lead image, uh, zero, zero degree domain uh, has arc patterns that align with those six outer spots. And the other uh, belongs to uh, 30 degree domain. And since uh, the atomic arrangement, uh, which is the atomic feature lead truly reflects, and since atomic arrangement of the subject uh, is, is the triangle uh, pointing up, or you can say equivalently uh, pointing down. And also the atomic arrangement on the island is parallel to the island edge. So this fact enables us to map the domain one-to-one -one from STM to lead. Zero degree domain maps uh, can be mapped uh, to zero degree domain and 30 to 30. So after that, uh, we can see uh, on, on, we can see on uh, these intensity versus, versus angle plots and we can, uh, we can tell that uh, the dominant degree, uh, the, dominant, the dominant patterns uh, on both images uh, are coming from zero degree domain. So we can draw the conclusion that um, the results uh, are consistent. So um, that's the end of my talk. Uh, thank you.